I guess I'll just make a few comments about this. I, I'm very saddened when I think about why the initiative process was established in this state. Um, to you know, have a populist approach uh, to, I mean, it was really like the big railroad barons that, that folks didn't want taking over the state and they wanted the people to be able to legislate. So now what do we have is an ultra wealthy multimillionaire buying his way onto the ballot and putting initiatives on the ballot that are gonna benefit his ultra wealthy status. That said, they're there. So, um, so I think we have to deal with them. You mentioned the, the millionaire backing these initiatives, Brian Haywood, and that it's an effort to buy policy. Did you speak out against Paul Allen and Nick Hanauer spending millions of dollars on Initiative 1639, which strengthened gun control in 2018? Uh, I, so, uh, what, what did 1639 do? Strengthened gun control. They spent millions of dollars on it as billionaires, so do you feel the same way about yeah, that do, investment? I do, think, I do think that the initiative process is established in this, in Washington State, what was set out. I'm not an originalist, but it is sad that uh, that that when when big financial interests take over a process, more than four hundred thousand people signed each and every one of these. So for Washingtonians who hear that comment, who did sign the initiatives because they're struggling under the weight of increased gas prices, because they're dealing with crime issues related to police pursuit, what do you say to them if you, your comments come off as dismissive? Yeah, I uh, don't. I don't think they're dismissive at all. I just think that when you put a premium on the head of every signature, uh, it motivates people to say lots of things to get people to sign initiatives. So the actual campaign that happens when there's a real dialogue about what the impacts of the initiative are, that's the thing that tells me where Washington, what Washingtonians are really supporting. I have no uh, doubt, and you know, have my own personal experiences with with financial stress, stresses and financial pressures. But if you want to get into an argument about how all the signatures were gathered, I guess we could get into an argument about that. And the number of people that I've had who've come to me who said, I think I just signed something. This is what they told me. Is that what it does? And I said, no, that's not exactly what it does. Uh, I'm, and I don't think there are 400,000 people who were all misled. I think there are people who really you know, we'll vote for it and believe in it. What I'm looking forward to is a dialogue in which each campaign makes their case and voters really get a fuller perspective of what the consequences of these initiatives are, what's likely to happen as a result of them, and then can make their decisions about what they want Washington to do.